how can I develop the claims and counterclaims in an argument fairly? In this lesson, you will learn how to draft body paragraphs that support your argument by developing your claims and counterclaims fairly. Let's review the prompt you've been given. Prospero is the protagonist of The Tempest. His motive for revenge is central to establishing the plot in Act 1, Scene 2. Does Shakespeare want his audience to empathize with Prospero? Write an essay that addresses the question and support your position with evidence from the text. Let's review the writing process. This first step is to read closely and analyze the text you're writing about. Second step is to generate and plan what you're about to write. Third step is to draft and revise your writing. And fourth step is to edit and publish what you've written. In this lesson, we will continue drafting. In one of our last lessons, we gathered evidence and created an outline of our body paragraphs. We know that our body paragraphs will consist of two paragraphs in support of our position, and that these paragraphs will consist of a topic sentence with two to three sentences providing evidence and support, and a concluding or transition sentence. These will then be followed by another paragraph or two that details the opposition. This counterclaim is presented a bit differently, and that we'll have to make our rebuttal and evidence there as well. In our last lesson, in the process of drafting our introductory paragraph, we looked at our claim and counterclaim and their supporting reasons in order to make a concise overview for the reader. We're going to return to this overview in this lesson, as we'll want to make sure that we are respecting the directives of the prompt to point out the strengths and limitations of our claims and counterclaims, as well as to maintain an objective tone. So presenting to both sides of an argument fairly is important, because you want to make it clear to your audience that you have weighed the evidence carefully, and are not simply trying to persuade them by the force of your opinion or emotion. Remember, you're demonstrating your skills as a scholar and your ability to thoughtfully review and analyze challenging literature. Step 1. Review your list of significant reasons and ask yourself, what are the strengths and limitations of each? Step 2. Use your outline, evidence, and collected notes to draft your body paragraphs. Step 3. Ask yourself, do my paragraphs build a coherent argument? Let's go back to the list of significant reasons we made for the claim that Shakespeare wants his audience to empathize with Prospero, and the counterclaim that he doesn't want us to empathize with him. Now I want to make sure that I'm presenting my claim and counterclaim fairly, and I can do that by asking myself, what are the strengths and limitations of each of these reasons? Let's give ourselves a little bit more room to look at them. So let's examine each of, each of these reasons more closely. So for reason number one, its strengths are that I have evidence to support this, and I know that this is accurate because I spent a lot of time looking closely at how Prospero's retelling of the past establishes the plot in my close reading of this scene. And I think because we're assuming our audience is already familiar with the Tempest, I really am not going to have to spend a lot of time on that. Now, the limitation of this reason is that it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to empathize with Prospero. So this is something I'm going to want to consider as I draft this paragraph. Let me make a note so I can refer to this as I'm drafting. I will want to stress that the audience really wouldn't want to find out what happens next in the play unless they empathize with Prospero and Miranda's plight to some degree. Prospero's motive establishes dramatic tension and advances the plot. If we didn't relate at all to his feelings, we probably wouldn't be interested in any of the rest of the play. So let's look at the next reason. The strength of this reason is that it makes intuitive sense. So complexity adds depth and meaning to a play, but that also points to its limitations in that I don't have direct evidence for this statement, and thus it sounds like an opinion. So this will be something that I will want to consider as I draft this paragraph. So I'm going, to, I'm going to want to focus on the evidence that demonstrates Prospero is presented in mostly a positive way, even though he has negative traits. I have evidence for this, and I can, I can extend that evidence by asking the reader why would Shakespeare want to present this complexity. It makes sense then that it makes the play more interesting. So now let's examine the reason for the counterclaim. Its strength is that it is supported by direct evidence in Prospero's interactions with Ariel and Caliban. Its limitations, on the other hand, are that Prospero acknowledges in his account of past events that he gave power over to his brother because he was studying. So this limitation is actually good for my claim because I can use this as, ev as evidence in my rebuttal. And of course, this reason contradicts my claim because it supports the counterclaim. So in my paragraph, I'm going to want to point out in my rebuttal that Though Prospero does demonstrate a controlling and even abusive personality at times, he does seem to provide a reliable account of past events. So as we begin drafting our body paragraphs, you're going to want to have all the work we've put into planning in front of us to help guide and structure our writing. We've got our outline filled in with our reasons and evidence, as well as the notes that we just jotted down on the specific areas we need to focus on. In order to make sure we present our evidence in the clearest manner we can, so let me begin drafting my first paragraph. Okay, so I'll just start by reading, writing the reason I have so far as it is. Prospero's character is central to the play and his motive for revenge establishes the plot. I'll probably need to rewrite the sentence later to make it fit in with the transition, but it will do for now. So let me refer to the note that I made earlier about what I need to focus on here. 
That's right. I was reminding myself that I have to stress that the audience will want to find out about what happens next unless they empathize with Prospero. So, as scene two begins, Shakespeare knows that his audience will want to find out what has happened to this ship that it was sinking in scene one. He begins the scene with another exciting detail. We find out that the storm is unnatural and caused by magic. So I'm going to use a rhetorical question here to engage my audience. Why would Prospero have created this magical storm? Shakespeare uses Prospero's retelling of his history to fill in his audience on Prospero's motive for causing a shipwreck. We empathize with Prospero and Miranda's plight because we want to find out what happens next. Now I notice I haven't included any specific pieces of evidence from the text of my draft here, so I'm going to look back at the two pieces of evidence I've gathered before. I think some quotes from um, this, these first two lines here in this piece of evidence um, would be perfect um, right after my sentence about the ship sinking in scene one because Miranda makes it evident that her father caused the shipwreck. And here in the next set of set of evidence, these three lines show that Prospero has a motive for revenge and then he causes a shipwreck to occur um, that carries his enemies. So I will put this in the sentence where I state that Shakespeare uses Prospero's retelling to establish the plot. So let's try adding this in. So notice that when I add that in, I'm doing two things. Number one, I'm referring to the lines where I found that evidence. And number two, when you're quoting verse, you're going to want to put a slash um, to signify the line break. Um, so what you want to make sure when you're quoting uh, those lines in verse that you're doing that accurately. Okay, now that we've just zoomed in on how I drafted one paragraph, um, I continued on my own and I repeat, repeated the same process of using my outline and evidence and collected notes to draft my next two body paragraphs. So now that I've completed my first draft of my body paragraphs, I'm going to ask myself, do my paragraphs build a coherent argument? Now for an argument to be coherent, each reason should build and relate to one another in a logical and cohesive way, all supported by um, the evidence and aligning to the thesis. So we've worked hard already to plan for this by creating an outline and working through those ideas at the beginning of this lesson for fairness. However, sometimes after drafting something, we may find that our words and ideas come out different than according to plan. So this is why it's important to stop and check and make sure our reasons are coherently building up our claim. So let's zoom in on these two paragraphs so I can show you what I mean. So after looking over the draft of my body paragraphs, I noticed that my second paragraph, in which I provide support for the idea that Prospero's complexity as a character makes him more interesting, actually makes more sense after my third paragraph addressing the counterclaim. The reason for this is that the argument for the other side is that Prospero demonstrates a controlling and abusive personality. So to build up my argument that Prospero is a complex character, it actually makes more sense to present the negative aspects of Prospero first, because I'm building up my readers to understanding that Prospero does have negative character traits, and that sets them up to be ready for my argument that despite these negative character traits, Prospero is mostly presented in a way that demonstrates that Shakespeare wants us to empathize with Prospero. So to recap where we are in our writing, we've drafted our introductory paragraph, and then in today's lesson, we referenced our outline to draft our three body paragraphs. So after looking at these three body paragraphs uh, we, and asking whether it was coherently bidden up our claim, we ended up switching the order of two of the paragraphs. So to review where we are overall in the writing process, we've drafted our introductory paragraph as well as generated an outline for our body paragraphs. So in the next lesson, we'll begin drafting our concluding paragraph. Step one, review your list of significant reasons and ask yourself, what are the strengths and limitations of each? Step two, use your outline, evidence, and collected notes to draft your body paragraphs. Step three, ask yourself, do my paragraphs build a coherent argument? In this lesson, you have learned how to draft body paragraphs that support your argument by developing your claim and counterclaim fairly.